New information tonight that President Obama's many efforts to tweak his health care law without congressional approval may backfire. Chief National Correspondent Jim Angle looks at the financial implications of all those changes. There's another equally important question about the president making unilateral changes to Obamacare, whether the many delays and changes are robbing the system of revenues intended to pay for the program. By the time it's fully phased in, say in 2020, we're looking at costs of about $200 billion a year. Right now, the savings that was projected to pay for all the spending is not being collected as originally projected. In fact, the president's made so many unilateral decisions to delay key parts of the law, the Congressional Budget Office recently said it can no longer keep track of the spending. Their ability to say that this was a benefit to the uh, federal budget is going to become more and more uh, dubious as the years pass. Take the employer mandate, for instance, which was delayed from 2014 until 2016 for employers with less than 100 workers, delayed one year for larger companies and softened so they only have to cover 70 percent of their workers. And since individuals were allowed to enroll until April 15th, many will exceed the three-month limit to go without insurance or pay a fine, making it hard for the IRS to enforce. And say, you owe us money because you didn't sign up in time to have insurance by March 1st. Those two alone cost plenty. There was about $100 billion that was supposed to come in over the next 10 years. The law also counted on more than $700 billion in cuts to Medicare, including up to $150 billion in cuts to Medicare Advantage. But the president set those aside at the behest of Senate Democrats, afraid of angering seniors in an election year, though even more Medicare cuts are planned. It's very dubious that some of these Medicare cuts can be sustained over a long period of time. And a 40 percent Cadillac tax on expensive health plans like those unions enjoy, set to take effect in 2018, would raise another $80 billion or so if it survives. But the question is, when planned cuts to pay for the law don't happen, what do you do? You either have to reduce benefits and services um, and administrative costs, or you have to put in a different tax. No one knows how short the revenues will actually be, but if the president keeps making changes, the shortfall can only grow. Brett? Jim, thank you.